Bows. 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 Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. Yeah, we gon' talk, we gon' have fun. We be on fire, we be lit lit. It's a unique hustle. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy, ECEO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Not none, you know, my dad walk on. Man, hey, man. Make sure you like and subscribe to Boss Talk 101, man. It's a must, man. This is a new movement, man. It's going down. Hey, man, coming to a city near you. Is that good? Yes, sir. What about the Patreon and all that stuff? Go ahead and tell them. No, no, I don't do it like you. <laughs> <laughs> y'all need to make sure y'all follow our new Patreon channel. Go w, uh, well, go Patreon and just look up Boss Talk Podcast 101. For a small fee, you get to see all of our full-length interviews, which will not be on our YouTube channel after a while, so you definitely got to get on top of that. This is definitely going to the Patreon. So there's going to be some information in here that they they can't get, you know, the game is be sold, not told, you feel me? Man, check it, man. We got a guy here. Y'all heard his voice, man. He don't really need no introduction, man. This guy right here, man, um, man, this is a Grammy winning guy. This is a Grammy Award winning guy. This is an Emmy winning guy. This guy got, got so many things going on, and then he come up out of Chicago, man. Malik Youssef is in the building. I am. Thank you so much for coming on Boss Talk. Thanks, Big Boss. I appreciate you. Well, the boss is tall. Come on. You know what I'm saying, man? man. So I'm man. here with the boss and the boss lady. I can't. <laughs> hey, well, what's better than that? Man. Man. So, you know, we like to go down through that, man. Really get to know you, man. So, I'm going I'm to hand it off to Miss Jamaica and let her do her thing. Okay. Thank you, babe. So, from Chicago, Southside? Yes, ma'am. What was it like growing up in Chicago, and was your household, did it have your mom and dad in the household together? Well, I mean, it had my mom and my dad, but I don't know if you ever saw my TED talk. Um, my mother was um, abusive and neglective and so on and so forth. And Your mother was, your father wasn't? Yeah, my father was the, um, he was the, what, Passive they, one. what they call the, um, non-protective parent when mm. you go through counseling and shit and you learn all these motherfucking terms and shit <clears throat> he didn't protect me from her you know mm. what I'm saying I mean once he did when like one time she almost killed me I I, I remember coming back to consciousness and I remember him hold on hold her. on reverse reverse why would she almost try to, what sparked that isolation that incident to escalate well, it to was, that it was every day it was anything she just did it for no reason I mean she did it for her own reason okay. you know what I'm saying? we say no reason but it's, she had her own reasons she ain't fuck with me you know what I'm saying she ain't like me she ain't love me you and, on and, her and first child mm -mm. like we tried to figure it out birth yeah that's order. what I'm like um, we tried to figure out birth order first all that son, shit nope none of that do you look like a daddy nope not really I mean we all look like my, my daddy but you know it's not none of that shit it's just cause the other ones look like my, look, my, look like my daddy too but my brother look more like you know how you always feel like there's always a reason yeah we can't figure it out mm. you know, we've had imams and shaman and preachers and therapists and shit trying to figure it out and she you know because y'all looking for closure where that is concerned well we're looking for a way to heal mm -hmm. you know and we had you know ministers come up in our house and that she respected and she would you know, try to cry fake tears. The tears wouldn't even come. She would cry, but she couldn't bring the tears because she ain't fuck with me generally. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So and this is just pretend. you. She did this to just nobody. Me. Not nah. How nobody many? How many y'all? It's five of us. And you the only one. Yeah. Wow. I mean, she wasn't. She wasn't like. Uh, you know. I mean, but you was, said that moment when she almost killed you. You say your daddy stood up for you that time. Yeah, she knocked me down the stairs one day from I was outside. How a, old? A grocery store. I don't know. I might have been ten. Mm hmm. And, um, you know, she just would pick on me. She's bullying me. Mm -hmm. You know, you know how it is. And your daddy was there and... <clears throat> well, my father worked a lot, so he wouldn't see it. And she she was able to get a report that she wanted to to him about his son. Mm. You know, I don't think that would go nowadays with people. But, you know, she was able to tell him, yeah, Malik is terrible. He is. He dumb. And, I mean, you know, having an autistic son with learning challenges and shit, it's got to be frustrating. You know right. what I'm saying? Like I couldn't read, I stuttered, you know what I'm saying? I was clumsy, all those things, but that doesn't warrant, you know, the level of physical abuse and mental um, and emotional abuse that she gave me. It doesn't, even if I was a kid that dropped everything, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, those cheap ass glasses, whatever, that broke in the house, you know? But it would be stuff like <clears throat> failure to wash the dishes on time or some shit like that. You I got a question, because you say you were autistic um, growing up. Because I know some parents might not have the patience with mm -hmm. an autistic kid and that can, you know, grow anger within themselves. Yeah. Um, but 
I know nothing about this part, so is there something I'm asking? I don't know if you know. But whenever a person has an autistic child, do they send like a counselor or somebody into these households to help that parent know how to, you know, deal with their child? Well, we had a family counselor. Um, I can't think of her now. I think her name was Laney, Miss Laney. Mm -hmm. My oldest brother's deaf. And um, so we had family counseling. She just, you literally chose to treat me this way. You know what I'm saying? And you could see it. And I would beg her and cry. You know the same thing. So whenever you're begging somebody for your life and shit, they feel like they got power over you. And they exert that power if they're a negative person. You know what I'm saying? She was a negative person. She didn't have a real life. She couldn't drive. She didn't have a job. She didn't have a high school diploma. Shit like that. And my daddy let it go. You know, he let he G for that shit. You know what I'm saying? How old were you when you moved out? I, I ran away a couple times and shit like that, but I I was really out of that motherfucker, like moving around, not being around, spent, you know, in the street, like 15. 15. Mm hmm. Started mm -hmm. getting outside then. She would, like. Because you know, of her. Yeah. And mm -hmm. she would, like, you know, hey, come back. We had, like, family meetings and shit. My father would be like, when you gonna move out? I'm like, we having a family meeting about financial, you know, solvency and shit. Which I'm a I'm a earner I'm a hustler you feel me I'm like how yeah because when you this? got out there at 15 and you say you leaving I'm like how are you supporting yourself how are you, you know, place to place and shit like that mm -hmm. but from 15 to like 17 I got arrested a bunch of shit like that and I would you know I would um, who taught you to survive I mean the streets you know people that love me in the street mm -hmm. you know Black Stone you know mm -hmm. the mob the nation wow you know so. At 15, I got a job at a car wash. My daddy was like, that's not a job, that's a hustle. And I was just like, well, I'm 15, G. Like, this is year my 15th birthday. And I was, um, you know, one of them kids that was diligent, you know, always was there, forthright, always a hard worker. You know, I was the kid that go out and shovel the snow without being asked, take the garbage out without being asked, shit like that. Mm -hmm. So that translated into my life in the street and me and my boy Mikey, my cross street neighbor, my best friend, Mike Stone, we worked at a car wash on the 107, and um, people took notice that we was there at six o'clock in the morning and leave to 12 o'clock at night. Mm -hmm. So they figured we was trustworthy and they put some trust in us on some 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 product, basically. Mm -hmm. And um, that's what that's changed what my life. That's what everything off. Changed my life. Wow. No question, 100% changed my life. I but do. I was still like loyal to the household, loyal to my little brothers and shit, buying them shit, giving my money to my mother, giving my so money to my father. So you were never father. ever disrespectful? Cause you know, especially some men when they feel like they're making all this money and they, I'm independent now. Well, I wanted so. her love. I wanted I wanted her to love me. I wanted my father to view me as a viable member. He put all his his eggs in the baskets of my of my siblings. Siblings, yeah. And he you. thought that they was gonna go. You know what I'm saying? And rightfully so, cause they put a lot of energy into them. You mm -hmm. know. Took my little brother to acting class and shit like, or act, you know, audition because he was funny. But he was free, so he's free to be funny. You know, I was always like bottled up and shit. You know what I'm saying? And growing up, how did this affect you mentally? Like feeling like you were less than? Yeah, I still, I'm, I still go through that. Still, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I still go through that part of feeling less than, feeling like I got to take care of everybody, got to prove myself all the time. But it worked well in this industry because I just became better than everybody. You know what I'm saying? Just better poet than all these other motherfuckers, a better producer, a better songwriter than all these other motherfuckers. So feeling like I had to prove myself all the time, you know, you know, I mean, you know, when I get with a chick, I got to fuck up better than any other nigga she ever been with. And that, you know, that's costly and time consuming and energy consuming, but, it also, you know, gives you platitudes, gives you people a chance to look at you as a viable entity inside of any kind of ecosystem. And that's what wound up happening. So I, I learned how to dress better than everybody else. You know what I'm saying? I learned how to be kinder than everybody else. You know what I'm saying? So my brothers and sisters didn't have to be concerned with kindness because they never had to treat me kindly because their mama didn't. You feel me? I, I, like I said, I appreciate you for coming on the show. I just... I was just think about everything that you're trying to take in, everything that you was, you know, saying. Mm -hmm. um, your mother, she did these things, and it's something that, I don't know, like I said, I, I went through sort of the same thing with, mm. my, with my dad. So, mm. you know, far as, did she tell you that you was dumb? And, oh, yeah. No, yeah, I mean, like, I was she, dumb. Yeah, I mean, but, you know what I'm but, 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 but I wasn't. You know what right. I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I, wasn't, I didn't believe that, bro. Like, yeah. like, it's a lot of times you could tell me something. I just never bought into it. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, you know, I, I really was gonna try my hardest no matter what, you yeah. know what I'm saying? And I was gonna get results mm -hmm. no matter what. And at the end of the day, I think with, I mean, with what you've accomplished, and I ain't gonna just skip ahead too much, but 
it just show and prove, you know. I yeah. don't believe in that dumb. That talk right there, I don't believe that, bro. I, I just know that it's something that, you know, maybe you don't have not Maybe the people who was trying to educate you or teach you or grow you up, maybe they was the one that didn't, didn't understand <laughs> how to deal with it, you know? No, that, that's the that's truth. That's the whole, that's the play. Yeah, she didn't know how to deal with it, but, you know, and I say, I, yes, I was dumb. I mean, like, the ugly duckling is yeah. ugly. For as a duckling, Yeah. because this motherfucker a swan. Yeah, so yeah, he, yeah, yeah. The, all the other ducklings is yellow and cute and quack and can move good. This motherfucker got long ass feet and yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. Short ass feathers, yeah. big ass beak. Yeah. He gray, he taller, he clumsy. Cause he's not made to be a duckling. You feel me? That's real. That's so real. they couldn't understand the, the the ancient parable of the ugly duckling. I, I mean, my dad is a brilliant dude. He should have made a peep that. But he in love with a bitch that, you know, that he chose and he was in love with. He sought after her more than he sought after anything else. I gotta ask you this, man. Like a poem, like that that you made about your situation, uh, something that was about like kind of mm -hmm. in the area about how your mom treated. Do you know that poem, and could you recite a little bit of it for me? Yeah, I made a couple pieces, but I got one that say, um, I said um, he was moving through flipping shit on purpose, sealed no fate. He was a chubby little nigga, but he. Carried no weight. He was something like nothing. Near zero. But apparently to his parents, he was an invisible child, but became the, became the clear hero. Wow. His technique was immortal. He moved through several portals unidentified flying object. Look at him way up there. Is it a bird? Is it a plane? No, that's me, man. No Terrence Howard. Used to be scared of everything, but now he's no coward. Shit ain't sweet. Think it is and see how quickly it gets soured. Lake Bloomer, but look how he flowered. Man. So that's man, that's man. hard, man. Yeah. Like I said, you you're very talented. Thank you, brother. I loved researching what you you know the things, the avenues. You you everything and anything. You know what I mean? Thank you, brother. You, you, I mean, I think that's what our people need, man. You know what I'm saying? All that. Think about when you think about you go back to our people. I even go back to slavery and all yeah, the yeah. different things, man. Mm -hmm. Come on. You can't keep a good man down, literally. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You don't matter how you try to shape and mold it. If God got something he's trying to pull out of you, it's coming. You know what I'm saying? And that's the part I know. You know what I'm saying? So that's the funny part of me because I'm the one. I, I get it. Mm -hmm. When you come from something where people didn't expect you to do nothing, yeah. come on, man. And then you blow up like that, like yeah. in their face, man. And it ain't even get about them. At that point, it's, it's, it's in yeah, you. It's, it's not about, about you. Them. You ain't even thinking about them no more. It is you about can't. Them. It's you know just weird, man. When, <laughs> when my kids see me on TV or in movies and shit, and my, my daughter, she's seven, my youngest, she's seven years old. That's hard. And you know, she'll like rollerblade past me in my house. We got a pretty nice size crib, and she'll yeah, rollerblade yeah. past me and hit me, you know. Cause she just don't know what to do with the emotions that yeah. her daddy, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? She don't, she don't know the pain and trauma I went through, yeah. so I don't try to share it with exactly. her. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So she just treat me like any other person that's, you know, she, you know, she. That's daddy. She hit on me, yeah, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, so what, you know, <laughs> pick me up. Yeah, <laughs> that's, they don't see none of that she other stuff. You see me on the Grammys, we have replaced something from the one grandma, my, my wife would be like, yo, I seen you on the Grammys, your face was turned up when this happened. I'm like, nah, sure, you tripping? So we'd go back and look at it on YouTube, my daughter, and she was seven, so she yeah. didn't see it, she like, what? Wow. My daddy on the floor seat at the Grammys, you know? And to me, looking at looking at myself through her eyes, because I'm in the journey, I'm, I'm running, you know what I'm saying? That's real, that's so real. So I don't get to feel it as much. And I look at it through her eyes, I'm like, this is some amazing shit. Fam. Nah, it's hard. You know, Rihanna did all the lights on, on the Super Bowl Sunday night, and that's my song. Dang, mm -hmm. hard, hard. And my, my daughter, she couldn't have been happier or prouder. No. And you know, a little bit you think like, man, I wish my mama could see this, but you know, like, man, fuck her though, Joe, you know what I'm saying? Real. That's she real. can see it if she want to. Right. You know, I'm, you know. Man. I'm not mad at her, you know what I'm saying? She did what she did. She did what she did. I know you're gonna get did. into that, but I wanted to go back for a little bit. Um, what was it at that time? Because you know how you said your mom, how she was treating you and how everybody was treating you and mm -hmm. everything like that. 
and I know what both of y'all went through, but what was it and who, or who was it that maybe had said something to you to turn that channel for you to grow for the better now and not be so, you know, not confident, not this, but change. Yeah. Um, what caused that change? The vibrational aspect of it was people in the neighborhood that didn't know. They would, you know, say stuff to me like, you're a good boy, Malik, and thank you for doing this, and thank you for doing that. Because like I say, I would shovel all the snow, rake all the leaves, pick up all the paper on the block. You know what I'm saying? I was that person. But that's also just innate inside me. That's who I am. I'm just a kind person. You know, I'm not perfect. You know what I'm saying? And I'm violent. You know? I'm violent. Motherfucker, get on that. I get on that with him. You feel yeah, me? Yeah. You know? But I couldn't express that in my household, so it kind of like... You know, in my neighborhood with the people I wanted to be friends with, I would allow them to mistreat me just like I allowed my mother to mistreat me until I stopped seeking her love. Then I stopped seeking love from people that did that refused to love me. And that's when everything changed. I'm like, man. But I heard you say earlier too. about this the street the black pea stones. Yes, sir. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh that was the family. That helped yes, sir. mold you. Uh yes, sir. how did you even link with them? Was it the neighborhood? Because I was the know neighborhood. The, it, it was the, the neighborhood. neighborhood. Yeah. So when you shoveling snow, snow it's it's some it's the the, the, the people there. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the guys that really matter and mm -hmm. saying, Hey man, mm -hmm. what you need? How can we help you with that? And showing you that love. Yes, sir. And that's and it, real. it started antagonistically because I was a meek humble, scary little nigga, like, and then, but, you know, my father said, defend yourself, you know, defend your brother. So that was a mandate, because I wanted my father's approval, I wanted his love, I wanted his adoration, you know, so I'm ready to, you know, die in the middle of the street. Okay. Even against the toughest dudes in the neighborhood, little Larry, whoever, Kevin Woods, my father said, hey, man, they, they some punks, why you scared of them? But I wanted their friendship, but now when I decided to not need their friendship, I could gladiate with him. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you this. I went up and I uh, interviewed uh, uh, Prince Amir. Yes, sir. Uh, and me and I, I interviewed him uh, in Chicago. And you talking to, you talking you talking Chief Brown son? Yeah. Yes, yes, sir. I, mm -hmm. I was just asking. I was going to ask you about Jeff Ford. You know, like yes, sir. his release and everything. Like uh, that's the campaign, right? No question. Um, Free like, Chief. Yeah. So what, no question. What um what when you did you educate yourself about? Uh, what you had become a part of, like to know about the, you know, Jeff Forrest, because I had to understand that when I came in, I said, okay, I see this man, and I know it's a, it's something behind it where people are trying to keep us from, you know, feeling a certain way about, you know, powerful black men. You no know what question. I'm saying? So I just wanted to just get your insight on just how important his release is and just give him a shout out. Yes, uh, so my name is Malik, right? You know, so when I was a shorty, you know, we we got we came into the understanding, we came into the light as we call it, um, and we got you know we get blessed that we seek, and then we get blessed into this demonstration, and it's a family. But of course, there's going to be a portion of the government that says, and, and rightfully so, that says these are the bad people. We want you to not pay attention to them or pay negative attention to them. And that right there, whenever the government tell you somebody ain't good. That's when you gotta go ahead and do your own research, yeah, as we yeah, say. Yeah. You feel me, boss man? No, I got do it. Do your own research. I got you. So we get to get the laws and policies and bylaws and see that this demonstration is about uplifting, uplifting fallen humanity. Now, it goes awry when money gets in and politics gets involved and so on and so forth. It goes awry. We know that. There's gonna be some some bad actors in this demonstration, some bad players that's gonna right. come in and infiltrate, that's got, that took a job from the FBI. Yeah, yeah. That took a job from the CIA, you know what I'm saying? That's coming in on the COINTELPRO. Mm -hmm. So we gotta stay close to the source as possible, to the root of the information as possible. And what this demonstration started off to be, what it stands for, Go ahead. Sorry. What is what that's all will that what it stood for, what it stands for, and what it continues to stand for, and what it means to us, and how it uplifts brothers that come from a, a home that's 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 not broken, but it breaks him. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, because I could have been without without the guidance of this demonstration, without this nation, I could have been you know a serial killer. Yeah, and there's times probably I did lean toward that. Yeah, you feel me? Yeah, no. Where I was opping with everybody that wasn't Blackstone and then even to the point where it wasn't 12 eight Blackstone, you yeah, feel me? Yeah. And then even within that, there was subsections, you feel me? So when I start to learn about this demonstration and 
what was passed down through the new noble Drew Ali, who was the the first and only black man knighted, you know, in in England by the Queen, you know, to have no to have to be called a nobleman, you know, um, to be called sir. And he came, and what? Why, why did he become that? Was he, was he the greatest swordsman in the world? Maybe, but that's not what he got. Was he the greatest uh, archer? Maybe, but that's not what he got it for. Was he the greatest athlete? Maybe, but that's what he got it for. He got it for bringing the Moorish science, yeah, yeah, to England and letting them know where they come from and what this demonstration is and the and the, the Moorish science temple. And when we get this demonstration and see this 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 black man. Upright, independent, and fearless. You feel me? Because you feel a lot alone and yeah. singularly. You mm -hmm. feel me? So, you know, you can't feel death because everybody got to do that. <laughs> of course. <laughs> it's just, no, I get it. You That's feel me? So, so we start to educate ourselves, and my name happened to be Malik. So as I got older, some of the shorties couldn't differentiate between me and Chief Malik. So they would call me Chief Malik, some of the mm -hmm. youngest. And I would say, no, I'm not Chief Malik. I'm one of the generals for sure, but I'm yeah. not chief. Yeah. Chief Malik is in is in the penitentiary because America came and did their job on him, like they do upon any of our leaders. You know what I'm saying? And they're gonna make sure that any of your misgivings are held against you to the extreme amount. And that's just what it is. And that's what, you know, Edgar Hoover and all these, you know, FBI agents, CIA agents that have an exorbitant amount of budget to spend on you know, uh, dissecting and amputating from the community the black messiah. You know, um, when I was interviewing Malik um, and Larry, um, it was word that uh, Larry, who was senior, and uh, Jeff Ford sit down and ate go to, together. They, they, they go, to, was like, yeah, they go to child go. together. How mm -hmm. big is that? Huge for me. Because I was one of the biggest on the GDK movement. You know, GDK, all you know, whatever disciples, blah blah blah, and it not it took me into becoming to my older age for me to embrace even my own flesh and blood cousins. Yeah, that was on that side. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You feel me? And this sometimes this, you know, sometimes wisdom come with age. Sometimes age show up all by itself. Yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. But if you are forthright and seeking, then they come together. And you know, as much as I love Vic Mensa who was a stone, Chance, who was, you know, on the GD side. I love both of them equally, you feel me? Then Lil Dirk, who a BD, who I love. You know, Dirk is, Lil Dirk is somebody who I love, you know? Um, Lil Reese is somebody who I love. I was there the day they got signed to Def Jam wow. with them, you know, in the studio with them. Um, these, are, these are men who I love. And um, then when uh, Lil Ruga came um, with... Let the GDs do the dough. I embraced him, brought him to Kanye. Kanye embraced him because Kanye a GD. That's correct. You know, and put that whole thing together. There was some contingency inside of our group of should Kanye be indulging, and I'm like 100% he should be indulging in this. That's who he is. And that brought Larry Hoover out. Wow. And me and Larry were able to reconnect after 15 years. Wow. And become close. I've always Hoover been tight with his junior? mom. This, this Larry Hoover Jr. That's hard. Yeah, this is Jr. So he comes out, and we connect and have a conversation about Ruga with the GDs and the Doe song, which was the biggest song in the country wow. last year. You know what I'm saying? So, and people tell me, man, Mo, the Did most you, you produced that song. I didn't produce it. I just I remember I, that I song. I told him, yeah, I told him to get go get a hit, and I'll bring him in. And I'm the person that I couldn't even stand to look at a GD. Wow. Life. You see what I'm saying to you? So we don't we don't allow black men to grow in this country. Wow. Mm -mm. We take them, we take a snapshot of them, we wrap them up and we throw them on the fire. Mm -hmm. We never let them, white men get to develop. They get to go through their protracted adolescence. They get to go to the Olympics and tear it up in some other country. And we say, oh, well, he's just boys just being boys. And oh, he's never been in trouble before. Well, I've never been in trouble before until the police arrested me. <laughs> That's real. I wasn't in trouble before. That's before true. That. Mm -hmm. That's true. So, we don't, you know, we don't allow black men to have the same protracted adolescence as white men in this same country. We don't give them this. We don't provide them the same forgivenesses. So as me providing that, maybe for my own self, because I had some resources, was able to grow. And now I'm able to hug a little nigga who, you know, 10 years ago, 
all the hit him in his head, opened his shit up. You know what I'm saying? No, no, Just on the strength. No, I know. That he ain't me. That's real. Out, out grouping. So I had to learn to close that chasm in between us because there's no real chasm there. It's all imagined. That's it. That's, it's all based on it. fear and lack of resource and all this bullshit. So to get him with Kanye changed his life. Man. Changed the direction of the album Donda that we was doing. And everybody around me that called me like, man, so it took the most to let the GDs do the dough. And I laughed at it and said, yes. You know, and knowing that him and Dirk was ops, but I love Dirk and I love Ruga. Yeah. You feel me? And Dirk, when he did the TV show with me, he didn't have to do that. Mm -hmm. You know, bringing little Dirk to that space, you know, with some GDs in the building, you know. But Dirk has been somebody, you know, I was there when his baby was first. When, when little, little, I call him little, little Dirk. You know, little, little Dirk. You know, I held little, little Dirk in my hands in the studio in L.A. And I said, man, bro, they, Def Jam gave you 100 bands. Be careful going home with that money because everybody mm -hmm. gonna need, not, not want some, need some. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you yeah, know, that's real. Need, it's, that's not, real. it's not want. That's real. Mm -hmm. It's need, because they got kids that's born the same day as your baby damn near, or one on the way, you feel me? And can't keep the lights on. On my mama, they can't. So they go, you gonna go back home, take that money, build out here in LA. He went back home and, you know, things, whatever happened, whatever happened, 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 but as, as Lil Dirk began, and he's now he's a provider. Right. You know what I'm saying? And people say, oh, Malik, how you condone that music? I condone people, you know, that's growing. Mm -hmm. You think Lil Durk gonna make this music the rest of his life? He not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The more experiences he have, he gonna change, but I'm not rushing that change. I'm saying, can he self-sustain? That answer is yes. Mm -hmm. Am I proud of Lil Durk being able to self-sustain? That answer is yes. Can Ruga self-sustain? That answer is yes. Am I proud of Ruga being able to self-sustain? Answer that. Why don't you put Ruga and Lil Dirk together in the room and make a peace treaty? That's not how it works. Cause I don't, I don't know peace treaties. Mm -hmm. I don't know peace treaties. What the peace treaty don't mean nothing to me at that point. Now I'm for peace, even without the treaty. I'm for peace, so I'm going to foster that. But I'm not going to rush these men into a thing where they got to shake hands and come out on TV and stuff like that. That's a lot of hurt between that. And we, we as black people, got to understand that we should be able to have the latitude to experience the range of emotions that come with my cousin, my friend, my brother being killed by your friends, cousins, and brothers. Mm -hmm. They asked me at MTV one time, what you feel about Chief Keith Malik and that music? I'm like, nigga, have y'all ever heard my music? My shit is all about drugs, violence, religion, life. sex. Life. Yeah, life. My music, I, I, I said the word bitch on Carl Thomas' album in 2001. What? What's y'all y'all talking to me? I said, I said I knew my best friend was peddling, but was was meddling, but I continued peddling. I got arrested before I got rich. Trying to make some scratch like trigger feet. This is on a R and B bad boy album. Mm -hmm. And Puffy let me rock with it. Shout out Puff. Shout out Carl Thomas. I'm not for the whole inoculized, sanitized version of life. Let these men experience their range of emotion. Let them go through their grieving processes differently and separately. So when they asked me about Chief Keith, I said, "What? Well, no, what I got to say bad about Chief Keith? He's rapping and taking care of his friends and family. Wow. I want to go back. I want to go back to uh, just how you and uh, Kanye even linked up. Like, <laughs> I, want the ground, I, want the, I want the ground mm -hmm. story on what, how, how does a guy who's being uh, verbally and, and I don't know physical, but abused by your mother. Yeah, physical, uh, broken cat, nose, I, burnt, you know what I mean? irons, all yeah, that's what I'm shit. saying. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Uh, ostracized. Mm -hmm. and, uh, now all of a sudden, uh, you in a studio with a guy who produce, mm -hmm. producing. Mm -hmm. That's what I want to know. Yeah, about. it's crazy. I met his mama and she was. In, I was introduced to her through um, uh I want to call his right name, but it's um, Oscar Brown the third, Oscar Brown Jr.'s son, and uh, Koresh Ali. Okay. Koresh Ali, his chosen name. And they had did a McDonald's commercial. Okay. And a lot of people in the spoken word and poetry and conscious community was upset about that. And I'm like, how the fuck y'all mad at this man getting a check? That's where I'm from. Mm -hmm. That's real. Because mm -hmm. y'all ain't paying him. Y'all ain't selling him. I don't right. see y'all buying out his tickets at his motherfucking show. That's real. 
I don't see y'all buying his book out. Y'all ain't buying his motherfucking album. Mm -hmm. So fuck y'all. No, fuck y'all talking about? All you conscious motherfuckers, man, beat it with that goofy shit. I'm not with that. I'm not on that. I don't believe in that. So every time he would be somewhere, I see a flyer, I would go. If, if it, what I Hopefully it costs 10 15 $20. I'm going to pay. Show up. So they had an event. And um, Haki Matabuti, who is somebody who's an author, and he's big time for me in the poetry world. As I got into the poetry world, his assistant introduces me to Donda West. Wow. Mm -hmm. And I talked to her, she's like, oh. I said, I told her, I said, I work with Common, and I do this, and I do that. I ain't say the stuff like, I'm a black piece stone. I said, oh, dope, I shoot people. I got 80, I got 80 some arrests on my record. <laughs> that ain't what, I ain't give her that portion, right. you see what I'm saying to you? I gave her the portion that's gonna make her, you know, lean, in, lean into Yeah, 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 yeah. She said, I got a son that do music, and I want you to get around him. His name is Kanye West. I said, yes, ma'am. Because, you know, I, I got mother hunger. You know, I'm starving for a connection. And every all of my friends, they know, if you got a mama, I'm taking over. That's my mama too. <laughs> no, that's all. Everybody right. know. Yeah. Raheem Devon know, Carl Thomas know, Common know, and all my friends know. You got a mama, we share her now. <laughs> that's all. Right. That's all. Right. You know, I'm gonna be bringing Chinese food and motherfucking call all the time. Y'all just prepare for that shit, nigga. That's, That's real. real. I want to ask you about the fact of what phase was this Kanye? Was he uh, had he done? A no, album? no, nothing. He hadn't done, he hadn't done nothing. 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 Let's talk about it. So you know, um, so Mama you went Donda. To meet him. Yeah, Mama Donda. Well, before I went to meet him, I didn't hadn't met him yet. Mama Donda had had a relationship with No ID's mother. And okay. No ID was a friend of mine through Common. Okay. okay. They folk on the hustle. I'm a stone. And in their neighborhood, foes and stones don't get along. Wow. Mm. But me and him had a relationship through my man, peace be upon him, Yusef Hassad. Okay. He a folk. We went to high school together. So that was his people on 87th Street. I went to school on 87th Street. So in my neighborhood, the foes and stones is thick as thieves. We friends. We brothers. There, it was different because they didn't really have no GD ops. Okay. In that neighborhood. So they op with each other. You know how that's mm -hmm, mm -hmm, human mm -hmm. hierarchy shit. So the next time I heard about Kanye West was through my brother Don C, who I love and talk to all the time. And I'm so proud of him, what he's done in his life. The Jordan deals and Nike deals wow. and All Star Weekend, NBA, Spalding, uh, Foot Locker. Uh, crazy. Don C outside. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> no games. No games. And uh, he say, man, him and John Monopoly, who are somebody else who I love, he say, hey, can the go-getters open up for you? I was the host of a bunch of shows in Chicago. I had money, they had to pay me. I'm gonna always bring the best, you know, the best dudes out. I was gonna bring the baddest bitches out, you know, cause they wanna be around niggas that can comport themselves. They got a little bit of money, yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, they yeah. treat them good, yeah, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? 100. You know, I mean, you a boss, so you understand. Definitely. They gonna always attract to that energy. And it's human nature, nothing yes, wrong with of that. Course. So I say, for, for y'all, yeah, go get us, okay. They some young GDs or whatever. They say, man, and um, you know, Kanye West is part of him. I say, oh yeah, I know his name. His mama told me to be around him. I just don't have a way to be around him. So um, they say, yeah, he's, you know, he's that. He got a group and all that. And they got this song, Let My Niggas In. I think that was the name of the song, Let My Niggas In. And I had carte blanche at the radio station. Okay. I could go there anytime I want to, put anything on, sit down, have an interview, call in, talk shit, whatever I want the fuck to do. That's me. And um, so I let them open up. And then I started to work on things happening. The Carl Thomas album went big. I started to work on the album. And John John, John Monopoly, who was a and in my project mm -hmm, with, mm -hmm. with Zoe Records, my man Ola out of Nigeria, we had a very contentious relationship because, you know, he wasn't the best of listeners. And it's hard to tell a million that what to do. Yeah, of you course. Know, you ever tried that before? No, it's I've tried it. No, you <laughs> difficult. If you're talking to one, you better be talking in a way to where y'all can come to an agreement. Exactly. So and I you get, can finesse as, them as, in the exactly, right way. Exactly. I got money, he got money, so it's we wasn't here. But, but, we, but we partnered we partnering on some shit. But John John say, man, I wanna um help put your project together. So we get Carl Thomas on the project. And he said, you should get a song from Kanye West. I'm like, I, this is my third time here in Kanye, yeah. Kanye West. Third time's a charm. So I slide over to his crib one day, you know, and, um, you know, he's starting to make a little bit of noise. John John is helping them, taking shit to New York. He's taking meetings with labels and 
He's like, but very much like he is now. Yeah. Loud, jumping on tables, cussing <laughs> motherfuckers out, all that shit. But without I the money. So. so motherfucker didn't really take him that, goddamn it, you feel me? They didn't really take him that, goddamn it, serious. On my mama, he was just a motherfucker that was loud. But I saw some talent in him, and I saw some grit in him, at, which was more important than the talent. You know? So we started to, to bop it, you know? And um, he saw me as an opportunity to have a big brother. His mother had already put the mandate out. I talked to his cousin the other day. She's like, Donda told you to stick with Kyan and protect him. Are you doing that? I'm like, to the best of my ability. That's big. You know? And, and the reason that's big is because she's speaking from a different place now. Mm -hmm. This on a whole nother level. I do know that. And so I know because I got calls like that to where it, she ain't even got to see it. Mm -hmm. It's, already, it's mm -hmm. already being spoken to you. No question. Constantly. No question. You live in it. You trying to figure it out Ooh. every day, and, and that's the whole game. When some, because it's it's heavy. Speaking, it's speaking from a different place. It's bro. heavy, bro. And I know that it's heavy. It's heavy. I feel down the spirit all the time with me. Yeah, you feel yeah. Me? And somebody who I really looked at as a mama for real. Yeah. When Kanye moved to New York, I was on Johnny on the spot. You want some Chinese food from your favorite place? What you want? Jamaican food? What you want, mama? And um, I took pride in that. Yeah, yeah. I took pride in that. All the way up to Kanye got wounded in that accident, and then that took me out to L.A. Yeah. To be around him. Mm -hmm. To be more present as a protector and as a, you know, financier, you know, and all these different things that come with being a big brother. I grew up with little brothers, you know what I'm saying? And my big brother was deaf, so he was a little bit like a little brother to me, too. I had somebody I had to take care of. Yeah. He was deaf, and... Um, People take advantage of a deaf kid in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. That's real. But luckily, he was the toughest nigga in the world. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, he's a lefty. He could knock anybody out. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. He could run faster well, the than anybody other else. Other senses is even stronger. No than question. That. He could do all the flips in the world. He could get <laughs> straight A's. He could play baseball, football, volleyball, basketball. He could jump. He could run. Wow. You know. Yeah. So he didn't need that kind of physical protection, but he needed the protection from people emotionally tormenting him. That's right. Making fun of him. And he said, "Malik, what they say? What they say?" If I tell them they said something bad, then he getting their shit. It's you know what I'm saying? Oh, fully. I know. <laughs> One thing my daddy told me when I was real little, I was like four, maybe five, and I was staying with my grandma. And when my brother came to play with me, he was two years older than me, he was seven. And the big kids who I really loved, the like teenager kids that used to let me be their little mascot, they ostracized him and, and kind of like made fun of him and abused him and he was crying because they was bigger than him and they was bullying him. And my father asked what happened and um, I didn't really know what to say. Cause I seen it happening, not really having the vocabulary. My father said, man, don't you ever let nobody take advantage of or harm your brother. That's real. You, you stand with him and ever since then. It's been up. Ever since then. Man. Never, 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 never that I abandoned him in any way. You know what I'm saying? That's my big brother. And I learned sign language and that has taken me so many places. And I'm, I'm doing a book called I Learned to Hear Through a Deaf Man's Ears. Wow. Mm. That's, That's what made me such book. a cold songwriter and mm. producer. Cause he could only hear Michael Jackson through putting the putting the the, the boom box to yeah. his face yeah, and right. letting it go through his jaw. That's right. To his brain. Cause the ear is dead, it's vestigial at that point in the day, it ain't working. So the the bone, the skull has to be his ear. The vibrations. Mm -hmm. And I see how he, the rhythm in which he moved. He's like, what are you saying? So I would tell him the lyrics, then we got the tape. Because he was here on the radio, we were taping from the radio. But when we got the real tape, it got the words in there. So he could read along and I would give him the cadence. Wow. On that. And boom, Gram eight Grammys. Wow, <laughs> that's hard, man. So, <laughs> I mean, you, this music thing, man, like, like, when you, you, and I'm gonna go back, cause you mm -hmm. went to LA after Kanye's West, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Rick, and mm -hmm. you stayed with him how long, until he gotten better? Uh, until he got better, and until, basically, I stayed with him until the springtime, till it was time for his album to come out. Till it was time for, well, I, I had to go back to Chicago, I was still in the street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I had to go back to my hustle, but I came out with 500. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah. I came out to LA with 500, that's what he said he needed. And you know the camera that they shot the um, the documentary, the Genius, yeah, doc, Kanye yeah. West Genius documentary. I bought that camera. That's all. That's all. Because Kanye didn't want to use a stolen camera. He yeah. didn't want the energy of a stolen camera. You know, 
So I was like, let's buy a new camera. How much is the new camera? You know what I'm saying? This is back in the days when cameras was, you know, it was expensive. Five thousand right. dollars. That's right. <laughs> for a regular ass shooting camera. Nigga they didn't have no bells and whistles and shit. But I grew up with Cootie. Okay. You know, I grew up with Cootie and I put Cootie in a lot of positions to win, put him into positions to get money, you know, the whole nine. And I you know, Cootie was I I I I I um credit Cootie with <laughs> One of the people that gave me the courage to leave the street. I kept trying to leave the street for years, from like '94 until 2005 when I finally left. I, it took me like 11 years to leave the street mm -hmm. officially. Wow. So I would leave, and then I would go broke. So, yeah, yeah. I'm like, and okay, go now right back. and go right the fuck you back. One to, time I had to go, up. To, go to my little brother's house, Omar. He's on 115. He asked me for some money for his rent or some pay something. And I say, man, okay. I said, bro, I got to go back to these streets, G. So we prayed together. Mm -hmm. Me and my brother, we prayed in his basement. So I had to go back to the street. That was the one last mm -hmm. time. And we prayed. And I was like, man, I don't know how I'm going to make it because I knew niggas was telling and all that. And we prayed our way through it. And I'm blessed. I never had to tell on nobody. What year was this? That was 2004. I left the streets in 2005. Mm -hmm. Wow. I went and we had a deep prayer, man. You know what I'm saying? So I do credit my brother with that. You know what I'm saying? He ain't never been a fan of me type shit, you know, I'm like he ain't, you know, he's always had art in his heart. I mean, there's some guilt there, there's some, you know, some pain yeah, from right. his mama. He loved his mama, she was good to him, I understand that. I don't love his mama. Our mother, I don't love her. And it's okay not to love her, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's okay, I don't hate her, but I don't have the love for her that you would think that you would need to have for the maternal unit that put you into the world because she was an antagonist, a consummate antagonist an enemy to me, an oppressor right. to me. And by him wanting to take up for her, it it put a it puts a rift between he and I. Right. Which is fine. He grown and um I'm just a person that's like, cool, nigga, that's who you love, love her. That's fine. But no. you can't love her in me. Well, at, at the end of the day, I just feel like, and I never put nothing in a box because everything's always evolving. It's always evolving. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So every situation, I don't take it to heart because I know yeah, already as, as 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 God do his thing, everything going to roll out. No question. You know what I'm saying? But you got to be patient. And without faith, you can't have patience. Without yeah. patience, you can't have I faith. Mm -hmm. So you know what I'm saying? You got to have both. Come on so now. at the end of the day, I'm able to work with everybody when it comes down to thinking that way. Talk, boss. And you know what I'm saying? So that's the, truth. The, that's the only way to deal with people that you love mm -hmm. and not detach yourself from them. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've proven my love to everybody. They've not proven their love to me. I get it. I you know what I'm saying? And it's that time. Yeah, mm -hmm. but and now, it, now it's the harvest. Now it's the harvest time. Let me harvest what you planted. Y'all been harvesting what I planted. Yeah. But, you know, y'all ain't but, never went without. Y'all got bombed out of jail. Y'all got y'all kids fed. Y'all got y'all rent paid. Now I got to move to a new season because I can't have God being like, uh-uh. No, no, I no. told you, leave that alone. You already done enough. You done that. Yeah. Let them do for you. If they don't do it, they just don't do it. I'm not mad. No, but at the end of the day, you know, even on Spider-Man, he said, uh, to who much is given, much is required. And I did all. Power comes great. Great responsibility. There you go. So you already know what will come with leadership. No so question. at the end of the day, you are that one. Mm -hmm. And there ain't no way to get off and around that. No way. Go ahead. Okay, I got a question. Yes, ma'am. Um, earlier you said you went to prison. Um, what was the, How old were you the first time whenever you got in trouble? I, didn't, I never went to prison. I've been in jail. jail. And I went to um, Illinois Youth, uh, how, how old I, how were I see. you uh, the first like, time? First time I got arrested, I think I was 13, 13. 14. And I heard you mention that you've been in jail 28 times? No, I've had 82 arrests. 82 arrests. Mm -hmm. So how many of that end up being in jail? Uh, only like four or five times. Maybe. So, oh, so you're lucky. Yeah. Lawyers, man. Blessed. Now lawyers. You know, um, that's now the, lawyers. The, the thing I, I listened to you earlier and you said about uh, conscience rap, you wasn't really in with that. I'm not a conscious rapper. I'm not a conscious MC. I think a lot of people hide behind consciousness to make whack music. That music that people don't want to fucking really hear and they hide behind it. I'm with music that matters, music that makes a statement. I'm with that. I like music that uplifts people, that makes people feel something. But I'm not like, oh, if you're a conscious MC, I'm just going to follow you because you're a conscious MC because you're not a conscious person if you're not living that way. But when you think about you guys, you got Chance the Rapper, you got mm -hmm. uh, Common up there from mm -hmm. Chicago. Like, mm -hmm. um, these guys are guys that basically, uh, that's a lot of the where that that terminology comes from. It does, because, you know, 
But you gotta stand, these niggas is having real conversations out here though. Yeah. These niggas is having real conversations. They really saying words. They not, you know, I mean, think about Common with, you know, talking about fighting motherfuckers and whack MCs and I remember when Common and Drake was into it. They were going in. Yeah, when Common and Drake was into it, when Common was into it with Ice Cube. Hold on, let me acknowledge this guy that just came on the set. Uh, you got the headphones right here, man. Yada, uh, yada. This here is Ken Yada Sands, man. This guy right here is one of the reasons you on the platform today. My I like to always keep it 100 on Boss Talk 101, what a boss is talk. And this guy right here has been very, very, you know, dear to me too, you know, My family, brother. man. So I got to I gotta, I gotta point that out. But And then also his love for music. Being one that loved the music, being one that uh, uh, he, he loves to play the instruments and he, he just got a love for music. And being with a brother like you, I couldn't help but put him on the panel man thank you for coming on boss talk 101 man man you're welcome bro yeah man i so, love this show <laughs> thank you boss man. talk 101 if y'all don't know y'all better know <laughs> man yada was one of the first people that embraced me in this in this whole entire industry that's all that i explain so i didn't know about the clothing <laughs> game i did come into clothing early but i came into it from the freights okay so we was hitting freights and selling the clothes to some of the Korean um, clothiers and retailers that couldn't get the accounts. They couldn't get Cross Color. They couldn't get Carl Kana because the sales rep had their relationships with a lot of the Jewish uh, shopkeeps. Yeah. So we would hit the freights and if we could get the real shit, we'd give it to them. If we get the bootleg, we'd give it to them whichever one they would buy from us. And I built a relationship with a lot of the Muslim and Korean retailers in Chicago. Wow. So much so, they embraced me and told me about different clothing shows which I had no idea existed. Wow. I had no idea they existed. No idea that clothing the shows existed, whatever that meant, right? Mm -hmm. And then I met Shabazz Brothers. Mm. And they told me about magic. Yeah. And my, this guy I was working with, um, Alvin Rodgers and Peace Means Peace. So we came out to Magic in 1996 and it was a whole nother world. They started saying the Magic Show in Vegas. I thought they was talking about, you know, David Copperfield some shit. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah, that's yeah, what yeah. everybody said. Yeah, that's, what, that's what I thought too early on. I'm like, what? The Magic Show? Nigga, I ain't going to no motherfucking Magic Show. I'm going to go out there and sell some cocaine or some shit to some motherfucking <laughs> people that's. You feel me? I'm saying to you. That's like, real. Some of the people that, because you're back in the days, the guy that was moving the most cocaine was working at the hotels. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. They worked there. You know what I'm saying? They, you know, right, 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 right. So you. You, you sell them a half a key or something like that and they little group or a key and they distribute throughout the hotels and then you stay out here for a couple of days, you might move four keys in, in five, six days. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it was beautiful. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Sweet system, but niggas got lazy and shit. So anyway, I was having- But the game changed too. Yeah, no. Game, game always evolving too. The game evolved because they, they catch somebody and the motherfuckers spill, a, spill the beans. Spill the beans or, or either they find a new way to uh, mess with the drugs and mm -hmm. basically they water it down. They, they, it down, they, they, it they run the game, mess the game up. So it's a whole men. bunch, they're man. Not, they're not business That's right. Men. So when I came into the clothing shit, I, I noticed hustlers that was also business men that kept the integrity of this game. That's right. So- Kenyatta was one of the first people. And the niggas from the West Coast embraced me first. That's hard. Yeah, Kenyatta, um, Kimball, okay. Dezo. Oh, wow, not Kimball and Dezo. Yeah, they from the jungle, I'm a stone. So they, the stones is in the jungle. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah, so they That's embraced hard. me. Common was beefing at the time. Bro was beefing with Q. And they told me, hey man, let your boy Common know some real ones out here in LA fuck with them because wow. we was under the impression that everybody in LA was against us you, you think know? like that you know? yeah I mean I, I knew I knew DJ Quick shout out blood you know I knew DJ Quick AMG second to none C no I knew them but I didn't really know nobody else I knew Pac but I ain't really but Pac was like moving around going to jail all that kind of shit you know what I'm saying so he was not outside of our purview at that point and I'm like you know I'm with the henchmen from New York so it's all the kind of these dynamics going on, but niggas overlooked that and seen that I had some, you know, I was righteous first of all, upright, stand up guy, and these niggas embraced me and kind of let me into their clique. Man, let me say this, man. They little group that 
it's hard to get into the, with these men yeah, like yeah. that that's in the game yeah. they make they living out this game but they don't want nobody coming here fucking it up no 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 and, 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 and rightfully so I was just told you about how, how we just you gotta be careful on how you deal and de Ooh. you gotta deal with, with things delicately when you when it's got a purpose and it's something culture driven you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. so w just think about this man you just say Pac you know he was going to jail I just had somebody else on here say Pac he was really quiet and he didn't even deal you have so many elements of Pac bro you Gemini. know I interviewed so many people Gemini they bro they felt so many different ways about Pac and each one of them was totally different Right. That's crazy, right? Like, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Oh, he was he was laid back. He never did this. Yeah, when oh. the lights go on, it's a whole different <laughs> dude. But when the lights go off, he be in the corner. That's hard, man. You know? I just I had to say that. But anyway, man, like you, one of those guys. Uh, I I really can't get away from the fact of all of these Grammys, man, and all these options. I seen you, you know. I seen when Nick Cannon and you was talking. That's out mm -hmm. there, you know. Different things, man. Mm -hmm. Like, like, how did it feel to to receive your first Grammy? I don't know. I don't. I don't know if I had you didn't enjoy, did you? the understanding. I didn't have an understanding of what that meant. Yeah, because that was not something that that was aspirational in my city. You know, that was something for them other niggas. You know what I'm saying? We keep it real over here, type bullshit. Not understanding this is an entertainment game. You know, not understanding <laughs> that this is entertainment, nigga. Like we like, we gotta keep it real. We gotta be authentic. You know what I'm saying? We can't fuck with nothing, and we not understanding that we, we've been growing up looking at motherfucking uh, James Bond, who not a real person. The actor is a real person, but James Bond, not a real person. Mm -hmm. And we going through the ups and downs with James Bond. He in space, he getting shot up, he got a bad bitch. He driving a car in the water. This entertainment, we living and dying with this motherfucker, it's entertainment. That's real. They getting <coughs> billionaire rich and we sitting here trying to sell some dope. Yeah. So we could take care of everybody. Yeah. Not smart. Yeah, but. So I didn't understand Grammys. And maybe was a little bit embarrassed to have one. Wow. Maybe a wow. little bit embarrassed. Yeah, maybe a little bit embarrassed. Made me feel like I maybe um, had had gone cheap, Hollywood. Cheapened myself in some yeah. way. Yeah. More, you know, uh, smoke mirrors, cardboard, plastic, water, and lights than it was concrete. You know, base level, foundational me. What was the first? What was that song that got you that Grammy? Uh, that was. Um, I think all of the lights, maybe no, yeah. I don't know. I can't remember the first. Maybe it was all the lights, or yeah. maybe it was uh, crack music. Maybe wow, maybe it's crack music. Yeah, I think it was crack music. <coughs> so I, many Grammys. I yeah, yeah. Which well, one? It's, it's not all right, you know, like like I was just looking at it. You got forty, you know, platinum, you know, songs. You know, yeah. you know. Yeah. I, I interviewed Mr. Lee. He got thirty some, maybe forty himself. Mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. like. It's like you guys are, are that's crazy, really come man. down. That's what I'm saying. I, I deal with some people who I thank God for you guys, man, because that's culture. It's, Thanks, it's culture. Boss. No, for real. You know what I'm saying? So, but and without it, you know what I'm saying? These good moments, these moments we enjoy. I mean, you talk a lot about these moments. A lot of time, music, music, most of the time stimulates a lot of these enjoyable moments, man. Mm -hmm. So I want to say thank you. You know, thank boss you. talk gotta thank you. You know what I'm saying? You but, got a favorite, bro? Yeah, you gotta ask that. You got a favorite song, bro? I mean. It's story, right? It's layered. There, there's a, a whole bunch of variables involved in that. The favorite song, I, I felt the most vindication from all the lights. Yeah. Because I fought really hard for that. But also, I fought very hard for Gold Digger mm. to be the single. Also, fought very hard for Good Life to be the hold single. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Go back. Yeah, you, know, you know what I'm saying? No, 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 no. I want you to go back to all of the life. Just give me, you're not going to just t say these songs. On yeah, yeah, yeah. These are the you best have to give me ever. some details on how you even end up producing that and how you even, you know, give us the details in order for our people, our <laughs> listeners, to understand how they came about. That's the history. My production on All the Lights was, you know, honestly, you know, me trying to make the song. Um, viable enough for Kanye to like it for the album and to maybe be the single. That song was one of my favorites, though. Yeah, so that one right there, I feel the most connected to because there was a lot of fights. In there. Okay. I had Elton John sitting next to me like you sitting next to me playing keys and trying to come up with melodies and trying to come up with shit. And my biggest production on that was not just working with Elton John on the keyboards and 
Jeff. Another name we're just dropping, just. Elton just, John's big, man. Yeah, yeah no, but, he but big. how do you just have Elton John in your studio? Well, Elton John, no, came, no, ain't nothing Elton to play John with. came with um, Mr. Hudson, who Kanye signed, who wound up doing a song with me called Here She Comes Again. And he also wound up doing Forever Young with Hov. So while he was in the States, he did a bunch of songs. I never knew that. That's hard, man. Yeah, Forever Young. That's, hard, that's my, still my man to this day. You know, I'm, I'm kind of, I got like a lot of clout in London. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And um, so, but really, I think my biggest contribution to all the lights outside of, you know, writing and stuff like that was what I took away from the song. Okay. That's also production it? for everybody out there just to know. Production is also what you take away. What you take away. I, I agree with that. that. So I took away the Muhammad Ali sample that Kanye had in there. Mm. The champ is here, boom, boom, boom. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now I'm a Muslim from Chicago, grew up idolizing Muhammad Ali. Of course, of course. You know, my, my, my DJ partner, um, you know, Mustafa Rocks, is on the front page of the paper for punching Muhammad Ali in the nose when he was Man. a little bitty boy. Man. Muhammad Ali like this, and he punching him in yeah, the that's, nose. Yeah, that's love. So we, you know, all black people, he's the most famous person in the world for a very long time. So we took that sample out, and it it hurt to take the sample of Muhammad Ali's voice out, because I had the opportunity to meet him several times, and even in my adult life to meet him, Dang. and to meet his daughter. And, That's you know, we was at the Beverly Hilton Hotel having breakfast, and um, taking that sample out because it was a part of my life. It felt like there was in that sample. The champ is here, boom, 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 boom. So I was trying to write the, I was trying to write the hook around that sample. You know, so I'm saying a bunch of stuff. Was you in the wind? Yeah. Yeah, it's just wind. Go ahead. Um, so I'm trying to write around that sample and it's not working. And I can't master it. I can't hit it. I got some cold shit. People are like, that's cold, but it wasn't what it needed to be. And I, the spirit letting me know that's not it's not there yet. Yeah. All this makes sense. You know, the champ is here, the champ, the champ, the champ is here, the champ is there. All that shit was cool, but that wasn't what the song needed to be. So Understanding that, I had the engineer, Andrew, remove the sample. Okay. Though it hurt, it was painful to me, it also opened the song up and let me have a different train of thought. So that's how we got to the, to the, um, all the lights. All the lights. Let's go to the next the horns, But the horns was probably like. The horns was there because it was called Ghetto University. The song was called Ghetto University. Yeah. And then. When I came with the all of the lights, but that kind of has that kind of has like a rocky feel to it. Yes, though. it does. Like <laughs> triumphant. That's what I'm saying. I was trying to. I was going to the directly. I was too on. I was too on the nose of triumph and fighting and the, what the champion is. And we already had a song. Did you realize you are a champion in their eyes? Yes, yeah, I yeah, did. Yeah, yeah. I picked it up and brought it back to the crib. Yeah, right, right, So right. we had that song already, and I'm trying to make another one. Okay. We, that wasn't what the Spirit wanted. Spirit wanted that, all the lights. Well, now the you next know? one you had mentioned was... That's crazy, though. What was the next one you mentioned? Gold I said, Digger. Gold Digger. I said Gold Digger. Gold Digger was a big one, man. Yeah, it was a big one. It was a big one for, for Kanye in my yes, eyes. Yes, it, it was. It, it was it helped. It helped. She ain't looking for no what? What? Well, yeah, <laughs> they was on it. And, and Jamie, that I believe that pretty much pulled him out of a shell. No that question. opened up everything for him no as question. well. No question. Without um, a doubt, a contradiction. Like, like, so how was it even coming up with that, you know, and playing your part in that? Yeah, just situation? working with that, working with the fact that this, 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 the Ray movie was so big and Jamie was so big from the Ray movie and people really realizing this man had that gifted voice like that. And so my, so us I had having a, a relationship with him already from slow jams. So yeah. Get, yeah, we had the relationship. So sure we was, was, sure we was. was with Jamie, and then my, one one of the Stones from Chicago, Tayshawn Barrett. His daddy is Reverend T. L. Barrett. That we got later on got a song from the Father Stretch wow. sample come from him. And me and T, me and Tayshawn, we close brothers. We've been in plays together and all that shit. So. He was living with Jamie, mm -hmm. him and all them niggas. They was living over there doing comedy, acting, tele, uh, commercials and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jam. So Jamie was the was our man, okay. you know, and Brandy as well. People don't understand our relationship with Brandy early on. We'd be at her house almost every day. Crazy. She would cook food. That's when she was married to dude. Yeah, yeah. She would cook food and shit. So all these relationships in 2002, 2003 were, were formulating, right? And that's how we got that, that slow jams. Yeah, yeah. Shit on some money, okay. 
Oh my God. Some Luther Vandross. Yeah. Little Lunita <laughs> will definitely set the party up right. <laughs> That thing was, that album is that album is playing. Man, I'm gonna have to play this all night now, bro. I'm stuck. <laughs> so y'all knew you had some. Did, did you know you had some beat? Yeah, we know. I mean, that I one always right there. know. I always know. But Kanye is such a like a grinder. He'll 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 chop up a, a fruit a, a beautifully created fruit salad to make fertilizer out of it. Cause he's a consummate troublemaker. Yeah. He's a contrarian. Me, he told he 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 accuses me of liking good music. That's his wow. accusation. You just like good music. You just want shit to be good. I want shit to be wild and fucked up, Malik. I'm like, bro, we can't live like that all the time, G. No human can live in that constant turmoil, my nigga. It's not it's not healthy, bro. What the fuck is you talking about? So he'll take some shit that's Mwah, chef's kiss <laughs> and rah, 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 turn that shit into mush yeah right 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 and you right. can't differentiate that between this and you know fertilizer cow manure or some shit and that's when he's happy that's why he made that poopity scoop dude yeah that would be a drake song he's like I, I i got some shit on that drake song Malik, you want to hear it? I, I killed this bars so i'm at his place out in calabas i'm like oh you did okay i wish i could have got some bars in there but if you killed it you don't need me <laughs> nigga let me just hear it He's like, yeah, this, you're going to hear this shit. And it was poop, scoop, to me. I was like, oh, gee. <laughs> Let me ask you this. What did you think about when, when he was dealing with the well, with uh, the Donald Trump and uh, going up to the White House and, the, you know, mega hat and all that? This this your guy now. And at the end of the day, you with him no matter what, I know. But let just give me a spiel. On I, I love him. You know, we, we, we brothers. We not friends. Yeah. Yeah. He's he not a nigga that I would choose to be around. I'm not a nigga he'd choose to be around. Yeah. Mm. We around Y'all each brothers. other on, on occasion when the energy of the universe line up. You feel yeah, me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like if if you're in a if you're in a motherfucking uh Ferrari and there's Lamborghini at the light in front of you and y'all both turning right, because of the nature and the electronics of the car, your turn signal is gonna be off time. Except for every now and then. That shit line up and click together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. never thought that ride. somebody would say something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then yeah, it goes yeah. back a ride. That's me and Kanye. That's dope. That's all. Every now and then. It be on. Yeah, when he, like he said, my mama, Preston, my mom is with me, you know, and she say, thank you, you know, for being here. Then I, no, I gotta come. Yeah, I gotta please show yeah. up. You know what I'm saying? But other than that, you know, we don't go to dinner together, you know. We don't traditionally like the same kind of bitches. We don't like to be around the same kind of people. You know what I'm saying? He a GD, I'm a stone. You know what I'm saying? So many. It's a lot of different variable elements. Variable differences. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Very much, very much so. What, when I say this name, when I say Suge Knight, what come to mind? I mean, you know, Suge Knight was um, not a good person. And me and him had a very antagonistic relationship so much that it put me in jail. Wow. You know? It's and funny. I was in this hotel. The last time I saw Shug, I was in this hotel and we got into it. We didn't, wasn't no fisticuffs or nothing, but we was um, in the hotel. I was late doing some stupid shit and I kind of wound up late to uh, Kanye's concert at the Palm for New Year's Eve. Okay. What year is this? Uh, six. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Kobe, was, Kobe Bryant was there, uh, Amari Stoudemire, this where everybody was, this where we was at. Mm-hmm. Oh. So I'm I'm late. I get in. I'm like, I ain't got time to go to my room and get in the show to make sure Kanye's straight. Because I, I would be backstage just encouraging. Man, bro, we would say the prayers. And I thank God for Kanye West. And I'd be like, bro, there's times, you know, other places we's in London. He's like, man, I can't do this. I'm like, bro, we got to. Like, we don't have a choice. You can't just be like, this shit ain't right, so I'm not going to do the show. Can't do that, my nigga. So, so I'm like, no, let me leave my bags at the... At the at the guest desk and just going to the concert. I'm VIP with this nigga. Yeah, he he getting more famous at this point. This shit is hot at this point. Yeah, yeah, he's getting fire, right? Um, he came out the gate. Yeah, yeah. And my, I had the famous crack music song with him, me, him, and Game. At that point, so as the spirit guides me, you know, to be late and to leave my bags, I run directly in the shug. And this is this is six months. No, five, four, four or five months after the shooting, mm. and you know, and I'm surprised that I got I went to jail for that because I didn't shoot him. Right, that part. I mean, look at the law. Look, look what the courts say. 
The court say I didn't shoot him. I say I didn't shoot him. Do I know who shot him? Probably. Who shot you? And I, am I going to tell who shot JR? I'm not going to tell. Yeah, no ops. You know? That's not what it is. You know, you got shot in the leg, fam. After all the bad shit you did to so many people, you get shot in your motherfucking leg. This means there's angels with you, boy. For real. This means there's angels with you. You get shot in the leg, fam. You don't deserve a leg shot, nigga. You ain't earned that, but that's that's the mercy of a law, though. So you get a leg shot. And how I go to jail for that, man? Wow. How I go to jail? How, how do I go to jail for that? And everybody, oh, Malik is, you don't even know. He's the Illuminati. He with Puffy and them. He, me, 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 me. <laughs> Puffy, my big brother, he helped put me in the game. More than anybody else, probably Puffy is responsible for my career. Word up. You know, Puffy let me do terrible shit on his tour buses. Terrible shit. You know what I'm saying? And then he stopped me. And I one day I addressed that with Puff. I said, man, Puff, we had a good thing going. I was paying you. He said, man, the, the money got way higher than that, Malik. Wow. Too much was at stake. This is in L.A. We was in Santa Monica. He said, money was too much, man. You know, I love you, but, you know. And I had to understand people graduate past their, their need for you. Not that he ever misused me in any way. You know, and we still got a relationship. That's my big bro. We talk, you know, quite often, actually. Yeah. But I had to understand, because I had felt like abandoned by him. Now he got money, he don't need me. No. Not, it's up to me to get up to it now. Mm. So, you know, people saying, oh, he with Puffy like and that. he such and such, and that's why he a, he a bad person. I'm like, Shug the bad person, not me. Right. Why y'all saying I'm the bad person? Y'all see Shug? That's how I hate when motherfuckers be on that. Like, Shug, yeah, okay, he might seem like the victim, but he did a lot of shit to a lot of people. Anybody could shot Shug. Right. Wow. You know, him saying this me, because the party, the, you know, I ain't going to go too much into it, but there's a lot of people there wearing pink. A lot of motherfuckers wearing pink in Miami, nigga. How's it me? Because I was next to you or some shit, man. Fuck out of here, man. You know what I'm saying? How you know? How you know it was me? And why would you tell? So, wait a minute. So, he, he, he the one that he told? No, there's no way nobody else told. Unless somebody was like, I seen Malik shoot Suge Knight. It might have been that. And, you know, in my adult brain, it could have been that. Somebody could have said it, but mm, I don't get arrested a lot for people seeing me shoot somebody. Man. You feel me? No, I definitely It's feel. possible yeah. that he didn't say a motherfucking word. Like he said, I ain't saying I thought you would dang, dang. If I had you thought you had something to do with that. But, but, but anyway, no, man, look. Should was doing what he had to do at a time, and then it turned bad. And you have to be able to balance, you know, the same rule, the same hand that you conquer with cannot be the same hand that you rule with. And once he conquered and became the predominant and preeminent music label in the world, he needed to be able to pull back, and he didn't have enough people around him enough to, to engineer, to re-engineer his spirit to make him pull back. Because power corrupts. Mm. And absolute power corrupts absolutely because it corrupts the lens on which you view others and self. That's why it corrupts. You seem your, you deem yourself as powerful and that you made it by yourself and other people are not worthy. Yeah. That's, what the, that's what it looks like to you and that's not the truth. Change that lens and look at it through a clearer lens. Not the lens that with all the mud and scratches on it. And that lens has to shrink and observe you only. Wow. I, I just interviewed uh, Reggie Wright and he was saying he tried to convince Suge that you don't have to do all these antics anymore because you already got the wheel rolling and people already fear you. So you don't mm -hmm. have to do all this stuff. Have to do all so that. he was saying, because they was friends since the grades too, mm -hmm. he was saying if you would just just not even do anything and just your, your reputation holds its own, you don't have to be a part of it no more. But she just kept being sure. Kept being sure. And that, the Maloofs, is, you know, when they was the owners, that was their man. And he wasn't giving them the whole truth. And most people, it ain't, humans emotionally, we make decisions, not logically. It's logical to tell the whole truth, even if it may diminish you a little bit in the story. Mm -hmm. But to be the victim or the victor is better than being the villain. Yeah. For humans. Hmm. 
So we there, right here in the palms, right there in the palm, and I go to the VIP, and us, uh, after I get into it with Suge in the bathroom, we talk and shit, and he's like, man, give me your number. I'm like, same number I've been having, bro. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's like Take me. The number. Yeah, same number, same. Same number I've been having, bro, I got niggas in the penitentiary that's doing life. That's right. Niggas are doing 90 years. Niggas on death row. I gotta answer the phone, because they got children, and now grandkids outside. That's you real. You feel me? So, I go to the VIP and a flailing of security comes. Like, yeah, we want you to. I'm like, man, y'all ain't having me move nowhere, yo. Y'all like that? If y'all like that, then do something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, real talk. Let's go. You know, do something. So then they go get another security, couple security guards, and get one of the Maloofs. He's like, well, Mr. Knight is our guest. I was like, I'm a guest too. I'm here with Kanye. I'm the, you know, I'm one of the investors. I'm a writer. I'm a producer with dude. And he's the, Main act, you can come in here if you want to. That's real. He could be in this place if he want to, but further seeing to me that he done told on me. Damn. Mm. You in the bathroom just told me you ain't say nothing. I went to jail on accident, I Not guess. Hard. And now, here you go with, on Stone, man. On my mom, I feel like, you know, and they was bullying Danny Boy. That's how I first got into it. Okay, see. okay. They was bullying Danny Boy. Definitely. And he out of Chicago. He out of Chicago. He's from the West Side. So I got a couple of hard hitters I know from the West Side, and we came out here to holler at these motherfuckers. Like, you can't just treat a person like you want to treat them, because Pac was my man. Pac was like, yo, they be definitely out here bullying Danny Boy. I'm like, I'm on my way, Stone. Because I don't like that, because I was bullied by my mama. That's real. And, and aunties and everybody, they don't fuck with me. You know, my, my cousin, who's one of my favorite cousins, she told me a couple years ago, she said, yeah, your grandmother treated you good, you were spoiled. That's when I was four years old. I'm like mm. The whole family holding the grudge because my grandmother treated me special. That's what y'all mad at? Man, fuck everybody. So you saying, he, what did you, how did you guys approach that situation with them bullying Danny? How did you get your point across? <laughs> Went to death row. Okay. Like, it's not sanctified it, and, hollow, and hollow grounded to me, you know? If it need if it need to breathe and it can bleed, it can cease to exist. Yeah. So none of that superhero shit for me, G. No, I agree. None of that shit. No, I agree. So y'all gonna stop. You went straight. No, some bro. people ain't going. It right just don't on. it's a lot of dudes like that. That's yeah. why I always told people like, it's different where I come from. Like you're not gonna just do anybody any kind of way. And anybody can do you. Mm -hmm. It's real. Like I, mm -hmm. I I told you about this and you might not know where I'm coming from, but like somebody was telling me about fifty did this and it was it was Mike Terry and I was like, Man, where I'm from, it don't matter how much money you got. You're not gonna disrespect like mm -hmm. that. You not you could anybody a bomb can kill you, man. Mm -hmm. Anybody can get you. So you just you gotta move in a way to where you respect people. Yeah. And I think a lot of time Different cities live by different codes. And sometimes people don't know they're being disrespectful. Mm. They can't, they, they so fucked up in the brain, brain so scarred from childhood or whatever, they don't know when they disrespect. They thinking like, okay, I'm, a, I, I, I'm done disrespecting you. You should forgive me and let me back in your circle. Yeah. I forgive you because I know where you come from. Yeah, You come from where I come from, but I'm not letting you back in my circle because you don't haven't learned your lesson on how to conduct yourself. Wow. You haven't learned and it's going, Cause us to clash. Let me ask you something. To, uh, how much did this damage Danny Boy's career? When it, 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 it held in, him in back. this situation, you it held him back saying? a lot. Because we didn't hear a lot from him. Even after after Pac's death, we didn't hear. You didn't hear no more. He just kind of fell back when it was at the. He was at a pinnacle no, in his was. career. What? And, and I he, ain't mad at you. Yeah, it <laughs> fell off. It, yeah. I, yeah, he was at a pinnacle. And it, it should have been something coming behind that. Yes, but it, it didn't. Been. It did nothing. It just he, he wasn't allowed to flourish because you under this much stress, right? In the in your environment where you supposed to be under the least stress. Not that you got to be comfortable to create. You shouldn't be comfortable anyway. But the stress of danger and shit like that, it's very difficult to to for a kid like him. And you know, they they knew a little something about his sexuality that we didn't know in Chicago. You know what mm. I'm saying? Correct. So they used that against him. They take his little bins and go go to the mall and take his little card and eat up his little budget money and shit. And the other motherfuckers come in on his studio time and shit like that. And I was like, man, that's gonna stop, G. Yeah, yeah. That shit gonna stop. That's that. That's finna stop. And if you don't like it, 
Do something. No, and, and the thing, <laughs> and, and like I say, you had already been through a lot, and, and yeah. it touched you in a different way. Touched me in a different Cause, way. Because of the way you, you, would come, you come up with the way your mom treated exactly. you. Exactly. So I, understand I, I definitely that. get it. I understand it. That's why I was able to be so well in, at 18 years old when I went to the Army. I was like, oh, my mama did this to me every day. This don't phase me. It don't, work. it don't hurt, dude. Exactly. It don't, even, it don't it work. Don't, I don't feel nothing. These other motherfuckers crying and leaving and going home, and I'm sitting here like, mm. This this, this, a, this is a slow Sunday. Park. This yeah. is a slow Sunday for me. A slow Sunday. No, no, that's real. I, I get it because I'm telling you, I, I feel you on everything you're saying. I want to ask you about the music uh, then and the music now. I want to I want to go to a point of how you feel mm -hmm. about the music, how you feel about it, the way it's been dis distributed, how you feel about a million streams equating to forty two hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I, I want to know. I like it. Okay. Because no matter what, I can tell a shorty, hey, man, go listen to my song on Spotify. Yeah. I can't say go buy my CD because where they going to buy it from? Correct. You got to deal with what you got. Because if I had a CD, I, I, my career would have been over. If it was still in the <laughs> CD game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My career would have been over. Yeah, that's different. Because the CDs stopped the store, the store stopped ordering them. Now it's on to the next stuff from Def Jam or Universal or whatever label. But now we live in an environment where it's ubiquitous, where it's always there. Oh, that's real You know what I'm saying And You know I know people be like That's used to being pampered And taken care of by labels You know But you still gotta Apply your hustle Yeah 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 you Still gotta apply your hustle man you So know? So what do you tell that young kid That's trying to figure it out That that he's He's at home He's watching He don't know the algorithm he's Exactly trying to, he, he don't know But what he see mm -hmm. And he wanna be a part of something He see you mm -hmm. and, 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 and he see you with all the Grammys and all the different things, the accolades that you carry. How do you get through to him to say, hey man, this is what you do, this is how you, you win in the music industry? I tell him I hit the lottery. Man. Don't, yeah. don't bet your career on hitting the lottery. I hit the lottery. I came up in Chicago at a time when I had money and I had skills and I had relationships all converged together. Becoming a this version of me is so difficult. But the version of you that's never been done is very easy. Wow. Because you're making it as it goes. Be yourself, because everybody else is already taken. Wow. That's I can't hard. be Michael Jordan. It's already a Michael Jordan. Straight yeah. up. Mention Michael Jordan, man. Yeah, that's Chicago, man. No yeah. question. Say, man, yeah. So I want these shorties to understand that, man, it's nothing that's easy. We make it look easy because that's entertainment. This yeah. shit, man. 30 hours on one song, go to sleep, four hours, wake up, do 36 more hours on one song. They don't take all that, because I mean, Kanye is, is torturous. He likes to see people suffer. He's, you know, he's an antagonist. He's, he's a low-key style character. He likes to see people in turmoil. That's what, he gets a kick out of it. That's his kink. I'm not, I can't tell him what his kink to no, be, you know what I'm saying? You know? So, I feel like these shorties, they feel like I got a remote control. I can turn the channel whenever I want. Mm. I can call anybody that's in my phone whenever I want if they answer or not. I can go online and order the newest Jordans if I feel like it. Right. Why can't I just have the industry that I want? I can go and look at the baddest bitches in the world right on Instagram. I can communicate with her, even if it's a one-way communication. I can be like, oh, you fine, shorty, but, 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 but. So I think that structures the brain in the way where they think like, and then I should also have this thing that I have desired or I'm made for, or I'm built for, or I believe in myself so much. And I, tell, I challenge these shorties, you know, do you believe in yourself or do you believe in your talent? Not the same thing. Believe in your talent, that's easy. That's like, you know, a motherfucker that can, that's tall, believing that he can play basketball. But do you believe that you can make it to the league? Because that's a lot of work. Right. <laughs> you know, I learned something about music. They was talking about, like, you know, even Beyonce mentioned it. She was talking about just, you know, having a struggle, you know, having a life with, you know, with some type of conflict mm -hmm. allows you to write better music. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, you know, a lot of um, what we're seeing nowadays is people not having that type of struggle and then the music's being a little different. I think they're having a struggle. I don't think they're just putting it in the verses. I just think that, you know, I, I, and I you know, like, when I think about this genius right here, mm -hmm. you know, Thank you. Um, it's like, you know, on the clothing side, you know, I know I'm part of that whole culture, you know, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. 
And the time that he's coming up and the time that I'm coming up, it's amazing the amount of people we come to, to come together and the geniuses that yeah. have that have stepped that have created such a major product. Man. The man. stuff that he's telling me, I'm sitting here, my mind is been gone, been you know. Gone. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, on all, all the songs he don't touch. And I was like, wait yeah. a minute, these are songs that I must have rotated at least a hundred times. In oh my yeah, life. we. Easy. That's that, and that's the that's the that's I the talent. That. My kids. No, probably, and the same thing is, I grew up in yeah. my. I grew up with two brothers that are in the in <coughs> music correct, industry. Correct. So my first brother introduced West Coast to hip hop. Yeah. In L. A. So mm. I was I I've been to personally as a little brother to big brother some of the biggest studios. Yeah. So I would hang with him. He was my first introduction to studios. Yeah. And then my second brother who's also in the music and he's the West Coast basses, live basses, because at that yeah. time they didn't want to pay for the samples. So they used my brother to play the bass for all the songs. Yeah. So yeah. he worked with everybody. And I'm walking coming home to like, you know, I'm seeing Dub C walking out the house. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing mm -hmm. all these plaques yeah, with, yeah. you know, with Ice Cube and whatnot. I even did a song with Ice Cube one. Um, but being in the studio and then hearing what this guy had created, different level, man. Different level. De definitely. Different. Top three artists of all time, dead or alive. Number one. Any genre. Number one. I vacillate about this all the time. But my number one, I would have to say, is Jimi Hendrix. Man. G good choice. I, lo I, I love it. I have to say Jimi Hendrix is number one. Why? Because of his versatility and his willingness to, to change, and you know, you gotta stand. He was twenty-seven years old. Yeah, we did not get to see, not even the best of him, but he, but we saw greatness. We didn't see the best of him, but there was still greatness there. Yeah, yeah. Feel me? Um, number two. Number two. Let's stick with Henry real quick, though. Okay, I just wanna, go ahead. I just you got, say got something, something you want to put in there? Yeah, let's go. The band had three pieces in this band. If you listen to the music, it sounds like you got five people playing this true, music, dangerous. bro. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's yeah. Spiritual. It's all the spiritual. The thing this guy did with that guitar was was undone. Mm -hmm. Man, I mean, he's playing with the guitar, you know, with his tongue, with his tongue and stuff yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But when you're hearing the rhythms and how he's able to kind of just freak out when you think about that, nobody does that but him. Nobody. Yeah, man. He, he starts the movement with everyone wanting to be Hendrix-like. You feel me? That's hard. Number two. Number two, and also I, I vacillate about this, and it's like it's a hard one because that number two spot is so you know you is so many viable artists in that space. But I have to give it to Bob Marley. Man, damn. No, I, I get that. I, 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 I get to, that. I have to give it to Bob Marley, man. You ain't even lying. And the third one, it shocks people a lot. People don't like when I say it. They they get mad at me. They get upset with me when I say it. And I do understand that. I do understand how people can feel uh, can feel a way about this person's music. Um, and it it sometimes embarrasses me because this is the kind of music that I love. That I, I not only love what I like, but I love this music. And I love this. I love this artist as an artist, um, not as much as a public figure, but as the tapestry that they painted for people. The tapestry that is something that I can't, I can't let go of, you feel me? People say, oh, he was corn, he was, you know, he, he was constructed, he wasn't real, and he, this person was made, and all these different things, and I have to give it. And oh yeah, people in this band doing that. I have to give it to Prince. I Damn. have to. I can see that. People have a problem that. with that because he was a pop version of rock. He was a somewhat of a soul version of punk. Yeah. But the beauty of the convergence the beauty of the convergence of that. People are like, oh, so many people bad to him. Jane, he was a copy of James Brown. He's a copy of this person. Albeit true. I mean, who doesn't like James Brown? That's that's ridiculous. Uh, exactly. He, no, you, you, you can't. If pick you ain't up look at James, if without, you was a kid doing music and you looked at James Brown and then like, I ain't gonna do nothing what he doing. You crazy. Crazy. Yeah. Anybody would. Anybody he dressed would. just like James Brown. You respect look, him. Outfit for outfit, he was being James Brown. I do understand that. 
I'm not saying that. Like, why don't you just say James Brown? Because James Brown didn't move you like Prince. Nah, he was different from James Brown. James Brown was ridiculous. Involved. But yeah. Prince was able to, you know, they say, good artists copy, great artists steal. Well, the difference between Prince, I mean, he's a musician. <laughs> this guy didn't know how to you know, read one inch, one note, but can play, what, 15 instruments? Who? Prince? Prince. Like a virtual also. He's a polymath. 27, 27 instruments. Yeah. He's a polymath. Virtual also. So yeah. he's getting out. I play piano. I'm listening to him like, wow, this yeah. guy can do that. Then he's going to get up on a guitar. Then he's going to get up on this. That I mean, that dude is a... For, for his choice, I, I can't complain, man. Him, Prince yeah. is someone. People, people, people... Because people, they, they see him and they immediately see the perm and all that. They, they see James Brown and he, okay, I'll say he took James Brown whole thing but made it better. Man. Don't take my shit and make it worse. Man. That's real. You gonna copy my automobile, make a better version. Like, that shit crazy. You know what's crazy? That, that, that concert that he had when he put Prince and Michael Jackson on there. I remember that. He actually did that on purpose because mm -hmm. he wanted to see what his competition was like. He was still relevant enough to where he Very saw relevant. what Michael Jackson and Prince That's as exactly like, hey, these are my guys. I want to see what they look like on stage. Wow, oh, I man. was gonna get up. He said that. <laughs> <laughs> now, we, okay, I, I want I want I want to ask you about checking in. It's a check in thing. People keep talking about. Oh, I definitely. I want I want to know about oh, how 100%. you feel about it. And oh, I love it. Let's talk about it. Oh, I love it. I love it when somebody comes to Chicago and be like, Malik, I'm in Chicago, I'm just checking in. These are some of my OGs that do it too, from from Nike, Turn from whoever, yeah. you know, from other cities, other countries. They, I'm just checking in, then you know I'm in, in the town because I never want to come to a place where it's like, man, why didn't you tell me you was in Chicago and you had this issue, you know? And when I come to LA, when I go to New York, I check in. Mm -hmm. What? Of course. What? Where would you go? Where would you go in, let's say, the ancient world, right? Yeah. If you traverse the landscape between Asia, Eurasia, and Africa, and don't announce yourself to to the to the um, Naya Binge. Yeah. Why wouldn't you do that? No, that's real. And you know, you know what they like to eat, right? Nigga, bring that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, right, right, right. Fuck right. is you talking about? I ain't checking in with nobody. You you a bad relationship manager, and that's ninety percent in this industry. Wow, managing relationships. This my nigga. I ain't seen him in years. He said, "My boy about got a podcast. I want you to be on it." There's nothing else he got to say. Wow, that's hard. That's hard, and that's that. That's that code. Because his relationship means that much to me. That's real. That's real. That says a lot. I, his relationship I just, means I, I that just, much to me. Yeah. To have him as an ally means. I could take 30 minutes driving and 30 minutes to sit down. Man, he told me, he said, you got to do this. This one here is the one you got to do. I said, really? He said, yeah, man, this one here. I, I couldn't said, wait to get up and tell you about it. Yeah, what I said. Yeah, 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 like, nah, he said, nah, I'm going to But at the end of the day, I'm going to do it. It don't matter if you've been in Chicago and he said, you got to do it. He going to call me. He know. It's a code you go by when you've it's been around like us, man. And God put us in this situation for a reason. I believe that. So I live by a different code than like that, bro. You, you had mentioned Donald Trump and Kanye. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We didn't get to go in on that like yeah, good. That, that's the same thing, though. Like, Donald Trump, I had the relationship with Donald Trump, not Kanye. Kanye don't know nothing about politics, first of all. <laughs> okay. That part. He that's just know what he don't like and what he do like, and he weaponizes that to make people feel bad. Yeah. Because that's one of the things he likes to do. Yeah. And I don't think he would argue with that. If he was sitting right here, he'd be like, yeah, I do. I like to make I like to shake shit up. You know, you can tell that. Yeah, that's what he liked to do. I mean, more than he liked to do music, he liked to make people feel uncomfortable. And I mean, not even just uncomfortable, but like, he likes to feel, make, he tortures people. Yeah. And that's what he gets a kick out of. You know, as long as he ain't tying motherfuckers up in the basement, I don't, cool, do you, nigga? You know what I'm saying? But Donald Trump, you know, Mike Tyson introduced me to Donald Trump. Wow. That's mm -hmm. big. Yeah, Mike Tyson, you know, that's my big brother. You know what I'm saying? And. His introduction to, to, to Donald Trump for me in 2005, I didn't meet Donald Trump to 2005. Mm. I was late into it. Will I Am and Snoop and Puff, them, already, them niggas already knew him, because they was famous, and Puff was obviously in motherfucking uh, at, uh, New York. Right. So Donald Trump was famous for giving niggas money. He steal it from white men. He was the Robin Hood, you know, of the clique. 
He's stealing from white men. He finagling them out their money. That would never give niggas money, by the way, anyway. Real talk. So I'm not feeling sorry for them motherfuckers. And he give it to niggas. But what happened was <laughs> he found out a, a slick, he's, he, he takes the easy way to everything. And one of my big homies who's a uh, staunch Republican, white guy, about the same age as Donald Trump, he said, the reason why he didn't make a good president because he never worked a day in his life. Mm. He didn't know how to get up and go to work. He went to the White House and seen all the work he had to do. He just kept doing rallies. Hey, that's some song. Yeah, he just kept doing rallies. He never, he never went to work. You know, you get hired at a place. <laughs> you, just, you just go there for the lunch breaks, nigga. You, you, get, you get enrolled in the best school that you want to get into, lying. and all you do it is going to lunch and he fucking with the not bitches. That, even lying. That's you know, what I remember. He we walked out with the Bible. You held the Bible right upside away. Down. <laughs> this nigga held the Bible upside down. I'm, I'm going do that, back bro. in. I'm going back in now. He didn't do, he didn't do nothing. Uh, he just, I gotta go. <laughs> You know, he stirred up the white supremacist, sold a bunch of hats and shit. That's it. Kanye probably bought 10 of them. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> he made 26 Man. million off, off Donald Trump, has made in China. Straight Man, up. Man, that is so wild. So, but he, so just, true. he just didn't go to work. He was not used to working. And that's something I couldn't see because when I see somebody rich, because where I'm from, where we from, we work. This nigga worked. Yeah. So, we, uh, we, we take that and we superimpose that over everybody we know. Yep. Yeah, that's so. somebody that's that big. And not realizing that he went in that motherfucker and did four years of kicking it. Four years of kicking it. I mean, four wow. years of straight, yeah, no, he kicked oh, straight it. kicked it. Nigga. Kicked it. He had a great time. He had a, a wonderful time. Man, that boy had fun and was meddling, <laughs> torching people the whole time. What? In his own what? zone. You That's, know? Man, I went to D.C. in October. Some of my OGs tell me, some, I'm a Republican. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. They, they telling me, yeah, your boy was out here. <laughs> <laughs> he, he wouldn't even be in D.C. They would still have the meetings in the White House on, on, on in the morning, and they come out with a game plan, ready, break, and come out and just be going through D.C. cutting deals and shit. Man, that boy there, man, when he decided to send him up there to that building, and they got all through the window, I said, this dude, he going in. Like, like it's a different level, man. Like, this is something. Hey, America ain't never seen it like this. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and that's just the way it went down. They, but. Set, them, they set them fools up, man. <laughs> They, 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 they've got them talking like, yeah, y'all should take y'all stimulus money. These motherfuckers using their stimulus money to fly to D.C. <laughs> and they, they can't track this But my question, That's my question is. why you going to jail. You're not going to jail. And then the people in the White House, they say, man, what y'all doing in here? Man, we making money. Let me see your, your laptop. Let me see your emails. Yeah. They're like, this all illegal. They're like, it is? My grandfather's been doing this shit. They're like, it's still illegal, nigga. You was in the street. We was overlooking it. Yeah. You here in the White House, you got the My Pillow guy coming there getting you eighteen million dollars and shit. Yeah, that's make that was all nice. the pillows in the White House My Pillows. This is this is shit that what you about to say? This little, nah, this little I, hustle I, shit. You I was just kidding. trying to figure out who was the guy who actually transported the noose out there, bro. <laughs> Mike Pence, dang, Mike Pence. I'm, I'm just saying, man, they had a full out, full wood inside, noose, man. And it was inside, ready to go. Man. They hang was trying man, to get him. They was gonna hang stand, that man. Yeah. Man, a hangman stand. They would have did it. They killed the police. What you talking about? They weren't playing no game. They were sis, man. They were serious. They were sis. They believed every bit of that rhetoric, Joe. And man. I think he felt like I went too far. Yeah, but how was it not pre like like how how was it not planned? It was planned. Supposedly, oh, we were just going to just roll up there. But how do you how do you say something that's not planned? But you got the noose set up, man. Out outside, bro. Man, it's a hundred percent planned, bro. But the thing is, like, I, I be having, I ruminate about this. Either Donald Trump was in with the feds, or he just all the way dumb. It's only two ways. They're like, you know, you gonna go to prayer. We got some stuff on you you don't know about, my nigga. So, Believe. fire these motherfuckers up, and we gonna pick them off. You ain't gotta say nothing. We just gonna pick motherfuckers off one by one. Man, Malik, you only no other thing in the building. Check it, man. <laughs> yes, hey, sir. man, listen, man. I'm trying to figure it out, man. Is the new what's this new music coming? What's going on this year? It's twenty, hey, 2023. What's it gonna be, my yeah, brother? Yeah, Jordan year. What they call in Greek? They call it Psi. Okay, this is Psi, the twenty third letter. Yeah, mm. yeah, 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 yeah. In the Greek alphabet, Psi. <laughs> That's an important number because it's pivotal. Yeah. Mm. You got to think about Omega Psi Phi. Mm -hmm. That psi is a pivotal number, mm. a pivotal letter that represented by a number or a number represented by a letter. So for me, I'm going back and doing all the shit that I, that I never did. I'm doing entertainment this year. Okay. 
I'm doing videos for songs I put out, you know, 20 years ago that I never did a visual on. I'm doing a, a, a movie about it. I'm, I'm telling the story about it. I'm doing these podcasts and shit for the first That's time. That's hard. This is my first time really for the last like six months doing podcasts. Oh, this in here, going, it's going in. Only on Boss Talk, the back. Boss Talk 101 Boss is talk. where, it, that's, what, that's, what, that's where you're supposed to be, bro. I I'm am. being real. No question. And, uh, in Dallas, we're going to do it again. And I'm going to be honest with you, they're going to know, they're going to feel us too. Because at the end of the day, they need to hear from you because you, listen, the foundation is real, bro. And, and, and I, when Especially I, when you, Texas. When I love you Texas. talking, like you got to realize people hearing this, man, it's going to help somebody. Bro. You never met nobody like this, bro. No, 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 no. I mean, I'm being real. It I, is gonna help people. That's what I know. That's I like that you I, said that. I gotta keep remembering that. That's the whole Somebody game. Somebody gotta get a hold of this and get help by That's it. the whole game. Because I done been through all the rehabs. That's I've been addicted to everything except for nicotine and caffeine. Wow. Sex addiction, rage addiction, violence addiction, food, gambling, alcohol, Vicodin, 18 months. Mm -hmm. Every day, Vicodin people. Wow, wow. 18, that's almost two years. To be addicted to, that's before we knew what opioid addiction was. They just keep refilling your prescription. As long as you keep paying, nigga, $83, here go your bottle of pills, Joe. Come on back for some more. I don't give a fuck if you share them. You know, spit them up with bitches, do whatever you want to do. Give them to friends, taste this. And the woman, when I was living on the north side of Chicago, she told me she told me I was a junkie. And I was fucking mad as hell. I'm like, man, I ain't no junkie. Was, these are motherfucking pills for my knee. My knee got hurt. North side. You was yeah, North side Chicago. I'm money. from the South Side. Yeah, I had a little yeah, money. Nigga on North Side. Man, money. we got you gonna need to have like ten. Man, we gonna, we gonna, get, guy, it, we gonna get it together, man. Hey man, I, we gotta shut it down. I gotta, gotta get y'all night down. But man, love you, brother, man. Thank love you so you, much, bro. Uh uh, uh uh uh. I'm right here with you, you man. And you, you Man, you something else, bro. You yeah, always, hey, man. Listen, man, That's stop playing, God, man. man. When, I, when, I say, Say, when, man. I, when I say embraced me, you know. Love did it, the, man. Did the quick, you know how my fuck got that eye. Down. Like, nah, 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 nah. All points check out. It's going down, man. Thank you so much, man. Thank hey, man, y'all. Hey, y'all see what's going down, man. Kenyatta Sands, man. Come on, man. Malik yourself, man. It's going down, man. It's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101. The where boss. the bosses talk. Boss. Yeah. <laughs>